from the earliest days, Christians told the story of Jesus' life, his passion, his death on the cross, and the fact that his tomb is empty, that Jesus is alive, that he is truly risen from the dead. When pilgrims would come to the city of Jerusalem, they were anxious to see the places where Jesus had taught and walked, especially the sites where he had suffered and died for us sinners. Eventually, to walk along the route of Jesus' suffering became a very important part of any pilgrim's visit to that holy city. As time went on, particularly in the 1500s in villages and towns all across Europe, people began to erect shrines so that they could remember nearer to their home those events, those life-saving events of Jesus' passion and death. Eventually, that tradition, those shrines, came to be known as the 14 Stations of the Cross. Today, you and I will walk along that route, following in the footsteps of Jesus as he suffered and died for us sinners. In doing so, this will be a great opportunity to reflect upon just how deeply Jesus suffered, but also the marvelous example that he has given to us. No greater love, he taught, could there ever be than for a person to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that is exactly what Jesus has done for us. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us on the cross, be with you always. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, in love you sent your Son that we might be cleansed of sin and live with you forever. Bless us as together we reflect on his suffering and death that we might learn from his example the way we should go. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to die. Jesus stands in the most human of places. He's already experienced a profound solidarity with so many people on this earth throughout history who have been beaten and tortured. Now Jesus is wrongly condemned to punishment by death. His commitment to entering into our human experience completely begins its final steps. He has said yes to his heavenly Father and placed his life in his hands. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As we view the scene, we should be moved by both outrage and gratitude. We look at Jesus, his face, the crown of thorns, the blood, his clothes stuck to the wounds on his back. Pilate washes his hands of the whole affair Jesus' hands are tied. This is for me, that I might be free, that I might have eternal life. 
the second station, Jesus carries his cross. Jesus is made to carry the cross on which he will die. It represents the weight of all of our individual crosses. What he must have felt as he first took that wood upon his shoulders. With each step, he enters more deeply into our human experience of suffering. He walks the path of human misery. He experiences its crushing weight. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We contemplate the wood of that cross. We imagine how heavy it is. We reflect upon what it means that Jesus carries it. We look into his eyes. This is for me. So I place myself with him in this journey, in its anguish, in its surrender, in the love that must fill his heart. With sorrow and gratitude, we continue this journey with Jesus. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. The weight is unbearable. Jesus falls under it. How could he enter our lives completely without surrendering to the crushing weight of the life of so many on this earth? He lays on the ground and knows the experience of weakness beneath unfair burdens. He feels the powerlessness of wondering if he will be able to continue, but he is pulled up and made to carry on. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We stare at the weakness in his eyes. We can look at his whole body and see the exhaustion. As we behold him there on the ground, being roughly pulled up, we know forever how profoundly he understands our fatigue and our defeats. This is for me. In grief and gratitude, I want to let Jesus remain there. As I watch him stand again and gain an inner strength, I accept his love and express my thanks. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. Jesus' path takes him to a powerful source of his strength to carry on. All his life, his mother had taught him the meaning of the words, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Now, they look into each other's eyes. How pierced through her heart must be. How pained he must be to see her tears. Now her grace-filled smile blesses his mission and stirs his heart to its very depths. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As we watch them in this place along the way, we contemplate the mystery of love's power to give strength. Mary knows the sorrow in every mother's heart who has lost a child to tragedy or violence. We look at the two of them very carefully and long for such love and such peace. This is for me such incredible freedom, the availability of a servant. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. Jesus even experiences our struggle to receive help. He is made to experience the poverty of not being able to carry his burden alone. He enters into the experience of all who must depend upon others to survive. 
he is deprived of the satisfaction of carrying this burden on his own. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We look into his face and contemplate his struggle, his weariness. We see how he looks at Simon with utmost humility and gratitude. This is for me. So I feel anguish and gratitude. I express my thanks that he can continue this journey, that he has help, that he knows, Jesus knows my inability to carry my burden alone. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Jesus' journey is, at times, brutal. He has entered into the terrible experiences of rejection and injustice. He has been whipped and beaten. His face shows the signs of his solidarity with all who have ever suffered injustice and abusive treatment. He encounters a compassionate, loving disciple. She wipes the vulgar spit and mocking blood from his face. And on her veil, she discovers the blessed image of his face, his gift to her and for us to contemplate forever. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. What does the face of Jesus hold for me? What do I see as I look deeply into that holy face? The veil we behold is an icon of his gift of himself. This is for me in wonder and awe we behold his face now wiped clean and see the depth of his suffering in solidarity with all human flesh. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. Even with help, Jesus stumbles and falls to the ground. In deep exhaustion, he stares at the earth beneath him Remember, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. He has seen death before. Now he can feel the profound weakness of disability and disease and aging itself there on his knees under the weight of his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I contemplate Jesus brought very low. As I behold him there on the ground with all the agony taking its toll, I let my heart go out to him. I store up this image in my heart knowing that I will never feel alone in my suffering or in any diminishment with this image of Jesus on the ground before me. This is for me so I express the feelings in my heart. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. The women of Jerusalem and their children come out to comfort and thank Jesus. They had seen his compassion and welcomed his words of healing and freedom. He had broken all kinds of social and religious conventions just to connect with them. Now, they are here to support him. He feels their grief. He suffers, knowing he can't remain to help them anymore in this life. He knows the mystery of facing the separation that death brings. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, 
you have redeemed the world. We look at their faces, the women of Jerusalem, so full of love and gratitude, loss and fear. We contemplate what words might have passed between them. We recall all his tender, compassionate, merciful love for each of us. We place ourselves with these disciples to support Jesus. What he does is for me. And so we allow this scene to stir up deep gratitude. The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. This last fall is devastating. Jesus can barely proceed to the end, summoning all the remaining strength, supported by his inner trust in his heavenly Father. Jesus collapses under the weight of the cross. His executioners look at him as a broken man, pathetic, yet paying the price he deserves. They help him up so that he can make it to the hill of crucifixion. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pause to contemplate the Lord on the ground, the brokenness that makes us whole, the surrender that gives us life. We pause to experience and receive how completely he loves us. He is indeed completely poured out for me. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped. Part of the indignity of crucifixion is that the one to be crucified is stripped naked. Jesus is completely stripped of any pride. The wounds on his back are torn open again. He experiences the ultimate vulnerability of the defenseless. No shield, no security, can protect him. As they stare at him, his eyes turn heavenward. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pause to watch the stripping. We contemplate all that is taken from Jesus and how he faces his death with such nakedness. We reflect upon how much of himself he has revealed to us, holding nothing back. This is for me. And as I look at Jesus in his humility, I know that he loves me, and for that, I am grateful. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Huge nails are hammered through his hands and his feet so as to fix him to the cross. He is bleeding much more seriously now. As the cross is lifted up, the weight of his life hangs on those nails. Every time he struggles to pull himself up to breathe, his ability to cling to life slips away. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We make ourselves watch those nails being driven through his flesh. And we see his face. 
we together contemplate the completeness of his entry into our human existence. Can there be any pain or agony that he would not understand? This is for me, nailed to a cross to forever proclaim liberty to captives. What sorrow and gratitude fills my heart. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. Between two criminals, a mocking title above his head, with only Mary and John and Mary Magdalene to support him, Jesus surrenders his last breath. Into your hands I commend my spirit. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We stand here at the foot of the cross, side by side with all of humanity, and we behold before our very eyes our salvation. We carefully watch and listen to all that is said. And then, we experience the one who gives life, pass from life to death for me. This is the hour of our greatest triumph, the Redeemer hanging on the tree of victory. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. What tender morning. Jesus' lifeless body lays in his mother's arms. He has truly died. A profound sacrifice now complete. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We behold this tender scene at the foot of the cross. We contemplate his mother touching, caressing his body, the body of her only son, We remember all that his hands have touched, all who have been blessed by his warm embrace. And we pause to soak it in. He knows the mystery of death. He has fallen into God's hands. All this for me, that I might love as I have been loved. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. They take the body of Jesus to its resting place. The huge stone over the tomb is the final sign of the permanence of death. In this final act of surrender, who would have ever imagined that this tomb would soon be empty or that Jesus would show himself alive to his disciples, or that they would recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Oh, that our hearts might burn within us as we realize how he had to suffer and die so as to enter into his glory. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
we pause here to contemplate this act of closure. In solidarity with all of humanity, his body is taken to its grave. We stand for a moment outside this tomb. This final journey of his life has shown me the meaning of his gift of himself for me. This tomb represents every grave I stand before with fear, in defeat, struggling to believe it could ever be empty. In the fullness of faith in the risen one, given by his Holy Spirit, I express my gratitude for the way of the cross. I ask Jesus, whose hands, feet, and side still bear the signs of this journey, to grant me the grace I need to take up my cross, that I might follow in his footsteps and one day share in his risen glory. Father in heaven, the love of your Son led him to accept the suffering of the cross that his brothers and sisters might glory in new life, change our selfishness into self-giving. Help us to embrace the world you have given us that we might transform the darkness of its pain into the life and the joy of Easter. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me as we have meditated faithfully upon the mysteries of Jesus' suffering and death and burial. May the good Lord give to you the courage and strength in your life to follow in the footsteps of his Son.